it's going to turn red. So I'm going to mute my mic too. Thank you. Well, good morning. Yay, it's Monday, right? We get, I get to work today and have fun. And um, I'm just so excited to be here. Uh, this is supposed to be um, just a pre-record, uh, a recording, um, and it's not going to be part of the actual virtual Fox Fest May 2022. But I know that there are some people here, and I'm excited that you're here um, to share this experience. Please, if you have any questions, put them into the chat. Doug will monitor, monitor them for me. Um, I gave him permission if the uh, questions get to be a lot um, that he can interrupt me. Uh, the other thing too is um, the virtual Fox Fest sessions usually are 75 minutes, uh, an hour and 15 minutes. Well, it, this is SQL Server and it's indexing and it's me. And um, so we're actually going to go to hours, um, more or less. So, um, so we're going to just get started. And I'm so, like I said, I said again, I'm so excited that you're here. Um, SQL Server exploring indexing and querying strategies. This is the session. Oh, and I need to, I'm going to turn off my, um, my uh, camera so you can see more of uh, the screen. Okay, there you go. All right, so let's get started. So you most of you know me. Um, I work for White Light Computing. I've been in software development way longer than I thought I'd ever be, but uh, having a ton of fun with it. Fox development for a lot of years, st still continue to write um, interfaces in Fox and uh, Visual Fox Pro. Um, I also do Fox for DOS still today. Um, been into SQL Server for 10 plus years now. Um, gave a presentation last fall in Virtual Fox Fest for SSRS, SQL Server Reporting Services. I know a little bit of HTML and CSS to be dangerous. Um, great way to break things. Uh, I absolutely love what I do, and that's helping our customers do their jobs better. I'm highly involved with the community. Um, I go and attend, and it's all this is online right now, um, Glass, Greater Lansing Area for SQL Server, STID, um, uh, which is SQL, Ser SQL Pass in Detroit. Um, they are talk they're going to take the summer off, and they're talking about starting back up online as well as in person. Um, I am, have the privilege this coming fall in November to attend the Pass Data Community Summit. Um, they have it live and in person as well as online. Um, it, and right now online is a really great price. We're talking about experts in SQL Server all over the world. So if you're interested, uh, it's on a, uh, it's like I said, it's in November. I think it's the 15th through the 18th. Um, there are pre-conference sessions as well. Go check them out. Um, if you wanna learn more about SQL Server, that's a place to go. There are also SQL Saturday conferences um, that I've attended. There's 8KB online conferences, um, and that really does a deep dive into the internals of SQL Server. Group by, um, that was um, created by Brent Ozar, and both the, eight, the, the SQL Server is usually about 10 bucks if it's in, live and in person. I haven't seen anything online lately. Um, 8K and group buyer all online. Um, speaker, uh, Virtual Fox Fest. Love, love uh, this Virtual Fox Fest that I get. But the only thing I don't like is I don't get to see your smiley faces and North Row Candy at you. So um, also, I've been a speaker with SPID and Glass and, of course, Southwest Fox. And my buddy David, he's in the background watching the movie right now. He's so excited that um, to be here, too. But he's disappointed that he doesn't get to see you as well. So excited. So what are we going to be talking about today? We're, we are going to um, learn about indexing strategies, how to identify potential indexes for the tables in a database. We are going to be talking about heaps, clustered, and non-clustered indexes, and exactly what that actually means. Um, we're going to be determining patterns to look for in the data and how to um, determine then the indexes um, through those patterns. We are going to be looking at query strategies 
coding practices for well-formed query statements, how we can leverage uh, the indexes um, that are, have been provided, um, talk about code reviews, um, love code reviews, um, query strategies are a great place to do code reviews. They're important, um, they are humbling, but a necessary part of becoming a good developer and DBA. The end goal um, in all of this is to improve the performance of your databases through the use of indexes and better performance means happy customers. So let's just jump in. Index strategies. Definition, index strategies are a way to identify potential indexes for the database. These are best practices and there are best practices best practices and indexing patterns that can help us on our way to become effective developers and that accidental DBA, which that's what I am, um, because my customers can't afford and probably shouldn't. Well, they might be able to afford, but um, it's just one of those things where uh, I created the database for them. And if they have any issues with performance, they come to me. I am not full time for them. So there are several types of indexes. There's a heap, and we'll discuss actually what a heap is, clustered and non-clustered. There is also column store, but we will not cover this today. Okay, everything that we are doing today, um, you shouldn't do in a production database on SQL Server. This is a way you're gonna be in a development system where you can then plan for moving information, uh, indexing and re-indexing um, into production. Today, we're just playing around. Um, so just so you know, not for production. It's just a prelude to making changes to production. So when we create and drop clustered indexes, um, it requires a lot of read writes. Um, it's, it's recreating the entire table. Um, if the table has non-clustered indexes, then all the non-clustered indexes, they need to be recreated as well because um, um, potential indexing changes on the clustered index, um, changes uh, from a heap to a clustered index and back and forth, lots of disk space and lots of memory. So let's start looking at index strategies. And the very first one is heap. Okay, a heaps are tables with no clustered indexes. Okay, it, it's a table, not really an index. Okay, okay, I, I just said that. <laughs> um, heaps are just basically um, a collection of, of records. They're unordered. Um, SQL doesn't have any statistics on it, and it makes it hard to um, helicopter in and find data. It actually has to go record row by agonizing row um, through the, uh, ta the table to find the information um, that you have queried on. Um, there are very few valid cases for using heaps in SQL Server. Um, there are places where you could, but it's highly unlikely. So a best practice uh, is to have all the tables should have a built be built with a clustered index. But we do typically use clustered indexes when we create um, CTEs and those kinds of things where, or a temporary file, uh, a table, and um, you cannot create um, indexes on those temporary tables. My experience, I don't have any heaps. I make sure that each of my tables has a primary uh, key with a clustered index. And just so you know, and we're going to show this in the code, we can have a heap um, e even though we might have a clustered, a non-clustered index on it. Well, let's demonstrate that. So let's just start moving into some code. Okay, let me talk a little bit about um, my code. Uh, there are 21 files, uh, SQL, uh, uh, SQL scripts. And I'm going to show this to you. Um, and there's a cleanup one, and it just cleans up all of the uh, work tables that we go through the um, as we go through the demonstrations. 
there is a sandbox which has information on it and then there's another one that has table information so i just wanted you to be aware that they're there but we're really not going to be looking at them all that much um, but it helps uh, when you go and download that code that you understand what that's for so the sandbox i love the sandbox because it it does a um a good explanation of like show statistics um and it talks about um what does that mean um set status io um and it talks about and we'll we're, and we're gonna getting a lot into static io so we're going to be looking at the scan count the logical reads um, we're not going to see many physical reads the tables examples are pretty small um, nor do we have any uh, large uh, objects to be looking at as well. But anyway, so if we were to, and we'll get into this uh, when we get into our um, examples. So I'm going to move this off to the side so I can have it for cheap. Oh, there was one other thing I want to talk about too for getting started. So there's, and then there's the statistic time. Um, and then I actually created uh, my own timer. So uh, let me just show you that real quick so you understand. You see this a lot in the code examples where if I run um, some code and I'm go run it now, it'll have a duration. And here, woohoo, it's, it's zero duration it didn't require anything but it just gives me in hours minutes seconds and milliseconds how long something could take it was easier for me to decipher what this was going on in sql server than versus what um uh what the show uh statistics time did but i will show you both the other thing that i want to show you is indexing naming conventions i have it at the bottom of the sandbox i follow don't follow it uh, the ones that you will usually see me use is uh, the PK and the IX um, I don't typically uh, use the covering and it's rare that I use that so but I just thought I would point those spots out to you in the code scripts so that you would know that they were there okay I'm going to move that over oops and I just messed up my screen here a second let me get it reset Okay, yay. Okay, got it back. All right, so let me get into heaps now. All right, so we are coming to heaps. Here we go. All right, so a heap is just that it's a list of row by row of a table. So, and we're going to go create that table in the Adventure Works. And there you go. And oh, that's the information. Um, let's see. And oh, this is table information. I apologize. I'm like, this doesn't look right. Okay, heaps. Um, all of the uh, scripts have an information um, of general information resources as well. Okay, so we are going to drop the, the table if it exists and then we're going to create it so let's go here and i'm going to run it create 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 okay and so there you go and then if we were to look at some of the um statistics on this let me run that we can see the type is a heap yay so and let's go fill that and put some data in. And we're just pulling information from the adventure works. Create that. And it creates about uh, 20,000 records. So and if I and this does a clear cache, it makes sure that my statistics, the cache plans are all clear and, and SQL Server doesn't treat cheat in trying to use one that, that it knows about. And then here we're going to um, set up the we're going to set statistics on. Um, we're going to look at how um, the row counts, and then we're going to look at time. So here we go. 
and we have a where clause here so as well so this is on this people one and the duration was 13 milliseconds um, and and I forgot to turn on my my um, execution plan and that is found here we're going to run the actual one let me start this again hopefully I'll get better at this run that again and as you can see the duration went a little more um, because of the execution plan but there we go and we can see it's doing in the execution plan um, this one right here it is doing a uh, table scan on a heap it, there is no index for it to actually be able to use. And if we look at that arrow, it is a very fat arrow. And you can see where it's having to go through all of the rows to figure out um, the uh, predicate if there's any rows that match that predicate in the WHERE clause. So, so let's create a non-clustered index. And we're going to make it on the primary, uh, what the, the field is called, people PK. So and I'm going to create that. And then what I also want to do is it's still a heap. And if I do um, FK, uh, um, sorry, F5, and you can still see it is still a heap, but it now has a non-clustered index to it. The other thing that I want to do demonstrate the where clause same where clause where I'm taking trying to find the people PK that is equal to 100 so let's do that oh. there we go let me try that again all right a little bit more and you can see now where SQL is doing an index seek on the uh, people PK column. However, it's having to do a record identify, a row identifier lookup into the heap. So we had to add more time to figure out the, the result set for this query. So uh, let's see, I'm going to now create a primary key on, but it's going to be a non-clustered index. And is it still a heap? And you guys already know the answer to that. Of course it's still a heap. We still have the, non, the same rules apply. So same kind of where clause where we're looking for the people PK equals 100. So let's run this a little bit better this time though but it's still having to do uh, it's using the the PK non clustered but it's also still having to do the the row identifier to get the results set here so but it is faster so once I create here I'm creating a clustered index so once I do that, okay, and, and is it still a heap? And the answer should be no, it is now clustered. So we took the heap and we made it a clustered um, indexed table. So now if we run our query, the same query we've always run, a lot less, and hey, we're getting everything from the clustered index, seek. So SQL Server can leverage that clustered index. Um, there is an example um, here that we're not going to go into, but where we um, show uh, dropping the table, uh, a temporary table, and how we can um, leverage uh, indexing on that temporary table. So, but um, I want to press on to other things. So we're moving on to the next thing. Bottom line with heaps is that they, um, rule of thumb is we should never have a heap in the SQL Server database. They should always be clustered. Um, how are we doing with questions, Doug? Uh, no questions this time. 
Okay, excellent. All right, so index strategies for clustered indexes. A clustered in index is the whole table. It organizes the data based on the key columns. Um, it's stored logically, and, um, and the way we create those keys, we can make it so we can optimize the construction of the table so that we have less fragmentation. The question that should be answered is, what should the key column or columns be? So there are four characteristics of a well-defined clustered index key. It's static, okay? It never changes. It's narrow. Ideally, it's a, a single column, and it should be the smallest data type reasonable. And a smallest data type um, would be a tiny int, an int, you know, any of those. Um, unique. Um, the, uh, the index key needs to be unique. And if you don't um, create a uh, clustered index where it can have duplicate keys, um, SQL Server will add a unifier, um, and which will make the uh, rows unique for the non-clustered indexes that are associated with that table. You um, with the if, if you can remember that the non-clustered index contains the clustered index key column in it in all of, in all the non-clustered indexes. So it is important to keep it unique. Otherwise, SQL Server is creating that um, four-bit uniqueifier to it. Um, and then with it being static and narrow, um, the non-clustered indexes benefit from that as well. The other thing, the fourth characteristic is ever increasing. So as long as the uh, clustered index key is ever increasing, then um, the, the new rows will be added to the end of the table and which then reduces fragmentation. Another consideration for key columns is uh, what does it represent? Will it be used in the queries that access rows throughout the database? That's another thing to consider, lots to consider. So with uh, clustered indexes, there are patterns in the data that we are looking for, and there's the identity identity sequence. Um, there's, I use the identity function to do that. There's also a sequence object, um, which I have never used and have just read about and played with a little. Um, I really like the identity. It's super simple for me to um, create and use. Uh, but there are those, pe those people out there somewhere that use the sequence. There's the natural key. It's easy to decipher key. A good example is the United States uh, state abbreviations, um, country codes, status tables, right? Uh, foreign key, using a foreign key column in the clustered index. Um, there's multiple column patterns uh, where we have many to many, um, where you have uh, the examples that we're going to look at is the uh, part number and vendor tables has a many to many table, uh, part, num part master to vendor, where it's all of the parts that are purchased from all of these particular vendors. Excuse me. And then there's the globally unique identifier or GUID. I, I prefer GUID. Um, I used to call, and I mistakenly called it global unique identifier. You know, it's globally. I reconfirmed that. So, and with that, there's the new ID and then function as well as the new sequential ID. And we'll talk about those too. So identity sequence pattern. This one's the simplest. It's one of my favorites, and it's the one most used um, to build cluster indexes. It's easy because, um, uh, because it's uh, ever increasing. It meets all of those four characteristics needs. Um, the sequence, there's also the sequence object like I had discussed. Um, so the identity column, primary key, and uh, it's often an integer, so tiny int, small int, int, and big int. Um, the primary benefit of this pattern is that it adheres to all the attributes of a well-defined clustered index key. So let's go look at that in the code. Okay.
There we go. All right, description. And we are going to create the state table. Yay, one of my favorite tables. And this is, uh, it has all the values for, the, for most of the United States. And then we'll just go and look, see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go run that code. It should be pretty quick. I believe it creates 52 rows and it does. And um, so we can see, yay, yeah, it's pretty cool, right? So, and the thing is it has the PK, the full name state, the abbreviation, and then there's a, a, a column called excluded, exclude from the list. So, and then of course there's added on and added by and updated on and updated by. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a simple query where the state PK um, is three. So I'm going to do all of this and clear that out and then I'm going to run this code. Oh, and one other thing I want to show you, if I come to tables and I refresh, there's my state and you can now see the columns here. And you can see that there's a key, the primary key. And I probably should show that to you, what that looks like. So there's the table and there's the fields. And then the constraint is on the, um, is called PK state and it's a primary key clustered and it's on the column state PK. All right, and so you will also notice that in the indexes, you will now see the PK clustered. What's really cool is you can right click on this um, index and it'll take you to um, the property sheet and it'll tell you information about it. So, and that's really cool. Um, so if you're interested in exploring more of those things, it's, it's uh, there ready and available for your use. So anyway, let's go back down here and um, we're going to just go see PK and we should be able to see. Now I'm going to turn that on. So we've got the um, execution plan on the live execution plan. I'm going to execute super fast. We can now see that it's reading two pages um, from the, the uh, B tree. And we, it's using a clustered index, um, and we can look at various things within this. Um, you can see where it is just using the single row. Oh, let me go to properties. Go to properties. Um, so it only had to worry about one row, and um, and then you can see even the predicates. You can see where this uh, the let me where I'm talking about here. Okay, so the predicates, that's the where clause and what it's doing here. So um, some really good information in this uh, properties page. So, so there's the results. So super fast and we use that uh, clustered key. So another simple one. Um, oh, we're not going to do this one, but uh, this is where I'm getting into the query strategies with data conversions. So it's just some examples of um, when you're creating indexes, a good thing to do is do those querying strategies to check um, how the index is responding. And, and there you go. We are done with this um, code set. So moving on. Any questions, Doug? Uh, no, no questions. Excellent. Okay, the natural key pattern for a clustered index is a natural key. Um, the good example is the states. That's why one of the reasons why I chose that. Um, it uh, uniquely identifies a single row in all of the rows of the table. It does meet all the requirements. Does it meet all the requirements for a well-defined key? Well, our state um, key, our states table does that. Um, with the abbreviations. Um, there might be some issues with ever increasing. Um, again, our United States state abbreviations, country codes, status codes, 
um, you know, the, and the like in SQL Server. So let's go look at those real quick. Natural key. And here. Okay, natural key. So we have our states, and I'm going to drop it, okay, um, this table, and I'm going to actually create a clustered key, um, primary key, on the abbreviation instead of the PK. Okay, and you can see that in the structure of the table, I don't even have a PK. So let's go there, and I'm just going to create it just like I did before. And all right so there you go there's the table very similar to what we saw before however it does not have the state underscore pk so here we're going to do an abbreviation we're going to do a simple query with um, the abbreviation ac Again, super, oh, I forgot to put in the actual, um, um, and you can see it still did the um, pages of logical reads of two. Pretty cool. And then um, let me run that again so we can see the execution plan. And there it's doing a clustered index seek, and you can see that it's returning the single row that's to be expected super fast. And another place where you can see what SQL Server did in the queries you know, as the predicate is actually here. Um, you can look right here under the query example, and it'll show you how it set up the where clause. Oh, did that wrong. Okay, so um, let's move on to the next example. And here again, these, this is query strategies with data conversions, looking at some things and we you can go look at that later um, and we're going to hit on that um, when we get to query strategies so moving on the form key pattern the form key is I don't use it that much um, but maybe I need to go look at some of my um, my databases that I've created and see maybe if I should be using this is part of the cluster key. Now I have cluster indexes on my primary keys that um, create foreign keys and other custom, uh, tables, but um, this is actually putting the foreign key in the clustered index. Okay, um, it's not always appropriate, um, and it's a lot of times it's we use it with that one-to-many relationship from a header table and related detail table, like you know the sales header and the sales detail, um, those kinds of things. Ah, there you go, possible examples. So let's go look at that code. Okay. Here, there's three tables that we're going to be looking at. We're gonna have the header table and we're going to have a D, two detail tables just to demonstrate. Um, they're going to have the, the detail tables are going to have the same content, but it's how we set up the uh, the, the their primary keys. In the first one, um, it's called uh, detail clustered primary key, and the second one is where we're going to be setting up a form key in the primary uh, key column. So let's go look at that um there we go and i'm gonna let's see so and here we're going to create the header okay and you can see that the header has a primary key on the header pk and there's not a whole lot um it's just the header and then it has uh information just to fill it in um some junk so these are just junky um tables for us to um demonstrate on. Okay, I created it. And here's the um, detailed one with a clustered primary uh, key on the detail PK. 
So here you can see the primary uh, key clustered here. And then it's creating a constraint on the foreign key for the header, FK. And of course, it's referencing the header example here. And also with this table, this uh, cluster primary key, we are creating a non-clustered index on the header FK. Okay, so we can reference these tables back and forth. So let's go create that. Okay, and then here, the uh, detail table, but the cluster now contains the foreign key in it. So let's look at this. Again, same structure, detail, header, some fill-in stuff. The constraint, the primary key is on a non-clustered index, and it's going to be on the detail PK. We are going to create a unique clustered index, but that unique clustered index is going to contain the foreign key FK, the header FK, as well as the primary key. And then, of course, we're setting up that foreign key relationship. Let's go create that. And um, the, the data, I'm, I'm just getting information from the sysindex table. Um, using uh, SQL servers um, tables to create content is a good um, is great for examples. So I'm going to just go do that. And the header uh, table has 375 rows. Each of the detail have the same number of rows in it. Um, they're actually identical, other than in how the indexing is set up. Okay, so here we are going to um, look at the header example, but we're going to use the clustered primary key. Here I'm setting statistics time on, um, and I just, I'm going to, well, I'll demonstrate it to you, but um, I don't like looking at it. It just, it gets modeled in a lot of detail. I prefer my um, my simple one that I did, my user duration one. So let's go here and I have my live execution plan on and the duration is 53 seconds, milliseconds. <laughs> And the message, um, here's where the time gets set on. And you can see where here, well, let's look here first. There's a scan count. So we know it's using a non-clustered index. And it's doing logical reads, pages of uh, 46 logical pages. And that's on the detail for the primary key. And then for the header example, it's doing, um, and it's using the uh, clustered index and that it is doing reading two pages. So the elapsed time for that is 51 seconds. If I had to go look at the execution plan, um, there's a lot going on here. You're seeing where it needs to, um, it does a, an index seek on the detail. Um, let me see if I can do this. I don't want to make it that big. Um, there you go. So right here is where I'm talking about. Um, it's doing an index seek on the uh, detail cluster primary key to get that single record or records, uh, you know. So, and then it's doing a key lookup on the cluster primary key as well because we have other information in that um, select statement. And I'll go back and look at it. And it's doing a join, and then it's doing a clustered index here and then it's doing a clustered index seek on the header example and then there's some more joining of information and then you end up with the result set so let's go back to this and um, it produced 22 rows okay so um, let's go look and you can see that it had to do those uh, joins because we have the fill with junk in there and, and then the fill with junk from the detail. 
So that's why it's doing that. All right, so same query. However, we are going to be using the um, foreign key, same PK for the header, same with the filled junk, um, same detail PK and fill. And it's also the same where clause where it's 60, or the header PK is 60. So let's go look at this one and see what it does. And again, have the time set on. And we'll execute that. The duration is 50. The message is 42. Huh, it's pretty similar. So um, here, the detail we're doing is scan count of one. So, um, and it has a logical reads of five. Um, and then for the header, it's logical reads of two. So let's go look at that. There's a lot less work going on in the uh, execution plan here. So um, here we have the, um, let me get this going here. Not what I wanted. Let me go here again. So here, again, I Okay, so here we're doing the header where it's doing a clustered index seek on the header now. And then it's doing a clustered index seek because it, it contains the foreign key. It can do a clustered index seek. It still does the looping to pull in that other information like the uh, with junk. Um, and then it produces the result set. So that's pretty cool. A lot less work. Now, what would be interesting, these tables are relatively small. What happens if I had larger tables? Oh, I hit the wrong key again. There we go. All right. So now if we were to do, a, I'm going to put these all together. So I'm going to clear this. Okay. And then so we can look at this where we're doing a range. All right, and, and this, the, the queries are pretty much identical except where the inner join is. One is with the um, primary key and the other one is with the foreign key. The header PK, the where clause, is looking at the header PK um, being 10 and between 10 and 50, so it's inclusive, just like Fox Pro. So let's... Um, See if we can combine all that so we can look at this together. F5. So this one to 100 milliseconds, and this one down here, 100. This one actually shows up where the foreign key is actually um, less time consuming. So, oh, look at this work file, work table. SQL Server is having to do a lot of extra work underneath to get the results for this particular query using the detailed clustered primary key. All right. Um, and look at the logical reads here. 504. All right. And it ends up being the elapsed time is about 200 milliseconds. So if we come down to the next one, oh, much better. No work tables. And, and somewhat less milliseconds. So let's go look at the execution plan. Let me see if I can make this even bigger. So you will also notice in the very first one, in the very first one here, um, you can see where it's telling us that there's a missing index. Okay, and it's giving you some information. Um, just because, and let me make a note of this, just because SQL Server says you're missing an index doesn't mean you need to follow um, what they're, what SQL Server is suggesting. You should probably look, check it out. You should probably um, investigate it, but that doesn't mean what it's suggesting is the right thing to do. Okay, so here it's having to do um, a clustered index seek on the detail. So we're now doing an index 
I'm sorry, not an index seek, an index scan. Okay, so it's having to scan the entire index. Um, here it's on the header, it's still doing um, the index seek, which is good. Now, but you'll notice that there's a, this line is very thick here. So it's having to pull 1,970 records over to match and do a hash match with the header, okay? That's not really a good thing to be doing. Okay, and then if I come down here and look at the foreign key one, oh, look at that. It is beautiful. Um, it is, let me get this so I got it where I want it to be. Okay, so here we're doing um, the, look at this. On the bottom here, we're doing a clustered index seek. So um, we are only uh, producing, the, the line is a little bit, Center. It's it's actually helicoptering in and finding the records that it needs that matches up with the um, header, and it's doing um, a different type of join. And um, the other thing I want to note here, and then I'll, when I pull this back up for the batches, look at this. The batch is 21%. So let me go back to the other one, where the other one is uh, is. Uh, 79%. There we go. Look at that. So we're seeing a significant difference between how we handle um, the foreign key, whether it is or is not in that primary key uh, clustered index. And that's the end of that one. Any, any questions on that one, Doug? Uh, nope, no questions. Excellent. Okay. The next one we're getting to is a multi-column pattern uh, for a clustered index. Um, it's this, the multi-column pattern has two or more tables that have a relationship to a third table um, that allow a many-to-many -many relationship to exist. It's very similar to the foreign key um, example. Oh, there you go. And um, it also, um, adheres to most of the uh, attributes for a well-defined uh, clustered index. The pattern is unique and mostly narrow. If you're using the identity, um, those two are both narrow and they are definitely static. Um, possible examples, um, which we're going to cover, is we have a part number table and a vendor table. Um, Parts have to be purchased from somewhere and it has to be the vendor. And a part can be purchased from more than one vendor and so hence we have a third key table that does that join, that relationship. So let's go look at that. So what parts are provided by what vendors? And you can have more than one vendor per part. So let's go look at that. Get to that one. Okay. doing some of our work ahead of us. Um, we're just going to um, create a part master and we have a part master primary key, it's, a, it's identity. Um, we have a part name and we have some junk that we wanna fill in. Um, and we do have a constraint for on the primary master PK column and it's the primary key and it's clustered. And we are also creating a um, a non-clustered for the part name. Okay, so let's, and we're gonna fill it in with SQL Server sys table. So the data is not gonna make a whole lot of sense. So let's go do that. Oop. Think, 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 and it's just 77 rows. Okay, so the vendor table, vendor PK, the vendor name, and other stuff. <laughs> and again, there is a primary key clustered, and it is on the vendor PK. Here, we are also creating a non-clustered index on the vendor name. So, and then we're going to fill it in from the index tables. I know. 
do that. And it created 383 rows. Okay. So we are going to uh, create that many-to-many -many relationship table um, where we have the part master to vendor and um, and this one is the primary key and, it, and a little bit further down we're going to one create one with a um, multi-column uh, primary key. So uh, here we have the uh, part master to vendor PK, it's an identity. Um, we have the part master FK and we have the vendor FK. Uh, we have a unit price and then we fill in with a bunch of stuff. We have a constraint where we have the primary key based off of the primary key. And then we also create a unique non-clustered index for the part master FK and the vendor FK. We also create a non-clustered index on the um, part master and another one on the vendor. Okay, so lots going on here. So, oh, oh, and then we're going to fill it in. And that created 114 rows. Okay, and then um, here, this is the multi-key, multi-column key, uh, and it's going to look identical with the same fields. However, the constraints are different. The primary key is non-clustered, and it is on the, the PK field column. Okay, the, uh, We have the unique clustered on the part master FK and the vendor FK. Okay. So, and then we create a non a single non-clustered index on the vendor FK. So let's go do that. Okay, and then we're going to insert into there. And again, we have 114 rows. It, it should match identical to the primary key one that we were looking at. And if you're curious, um, we'll look at all of these and we'll do uh, F5. And we'll notice that 77 for the parts, 383 for the vendor, and then for uh, the, the multi column um, tables, they at 114. Okay. So let's do the first test, and it's going to be on the primary key. So let's go look here. And we have the part master, we have the part name, we have the vendor name, we have the which comes from the two tables, and then the unit price actually comes from that many to many um, table. Um, which is the part master to vendor primary key table. Okay, and we are going to do some joins. So from the part master, we're doing an inner join for part master FK to part master primary key, and then inner join to the vendor table through the FK to the primary key. And we want to look for the vendor name and see. Okay, and I'm going to actually run the multi-key as well. Um, same kind of thing. Um, it matches identical, um, this, this, the select statement. However, the, um, as far as the select, but the inner join is now to the multi-key table. Um, the, and then this looks the same. All right, so I'm going to run all of this. Okay, I can grab it all. And I'm going to turn the live execution plan on. Important. Okay. So it ran. Let me make this bigger. So the duration for the primary key 
uh, tape, uh, many to many, uh, was 57 milliseconds. Look at this. The uh, next one, which was with the multi uh, column primary key, was 33 milliseconds. Let's go look at the messages. Um, here, we're doing on the part master, we're doing it's doing a table uh, seek on, scan on the uh, clustered index and it's doing 154 pages. And then for the many to many, it's doing 24. And then on the vendor, it's doing two. Okay. So here, look at this identical. Huh. Curiouser and curiouser. So I'm going to make this a little smaller. So um, maybe that's a little too small. Let's see if I can. Ah, there we go. All right. So it's doing an index seek I'm gonna, on the on the very top upper right is doing an index seek on the vendor and just below it it's doing an index seek on the uh, many to many relationship all right and it's joining up some information and then it's doing a key lookup um, on the uh, clustered of the uh, vendor to the part master to vendor primary key down here in the bottom and it's joining some information up and then it's doing an index seek into the part master to get the part master name um, so there we go and then we end up with all of that and you'll notice that the query up above says 50 percent at the very top here if we go look at the second query what's interesting is it also says 50 percent Let's see if we can make this smaller. Uh, make it smaller still. Okay. So um, here it's doing the uh, at the top. It's doing the vendor uh, name, and it's using an index seek on the non-clustered. It's doing an index seek a non-clustered on the multi-column. Um, and then it's doing a key lookup to get the uh, the the price, the the unit price, and then it's joining those together, and then it's doing the seek, the clustered index seek on the part master, and it's joining up information there for the part master name, and then you get the result set. It's interesting that the execution plan says 50% and 50%, but the uh, we see behind the scenes that um, they look pretty much the same too, but when it comes to our duration, uh, one is definitely faster than the other. Makes you just sort of scratch your head and wonder, right? So let's go look at the second test. And the first part, uh, we're going to be working with the primary key again, the same select statement. But instead, we're going to go look for, um, instead of the vendor name, we're going to go look for the part name. And the, the second one with the multi key, we're going to do the same. All right. So same select statement. Um, the, the where clause is what's different with a different predicate. All right. So let's go look at this one. Think, think, think. Oh boy. All right. So look at that. The primary key is actually showing a, a shorter duration than the multi column key. The uh, messages uh, show that the reads are pretty much the same. And if we were to use the execution plan, interesting. The primary key on this one, um, let me 
zoom this in. There we go. Um, is saying that, look at this, 58%. But the duration was showing the exact opposite where this one was taking less time. SQL Server confuses me. So, and if you look, okay, between the two, there's an index seek on the top on the part master, and then there's a key lookup to get the unit price and so forth and so on. And then down here, it looks, you know, pretty much the same. Non, so, um, so again, it's doing a seek on a non-clustered. It's doing an index seek on a non-clustered down below here. Non-clustered. Ah, look, it's doing a clustered index here. So there are some differences that we need to investigate. And you'll notice that the um, cost in, of this query compared to the other one is only uh, the 42%. Did it wrong. Sorry. OK. All right, let's go look at something else. Um, we did the vendor name. Uh, let's see. There's a one that I want to really show you. And it, this is this one. I'm going to skip over the third example. We are actually going to um, switch the indexes around. Um, the reason I did this was because the part master table was a lot smaller than the vendor table. So um, what I am doing for the primary key one, I'm going to drop the, uh, let me move this over here. I'm going to drop the constraint for the unique, and then I'm going to do a different unique, but I'm going to put the vendor PK first. All right, so that's on the primary um, part master to vendor table. So let me run that. Think, think, think. All right, and then for the multi key, pretty much the same thing. Um, however, uh, I'm going to drop the constraint and I'm going to drop the uh, foreign key for the vendor and then I'm going to add the unique clustered but I'm switching the columns instead of part master being first I'm actually putting the vendor um, foreign key first and then I'm going to um, instead of having the uh, non-clustered index on the uh, vendor I'm going to do one on the part master FK so I'm just switching things up a little bit for the multi-column table as well. Okay, so when I go, I'm going to go run all of this and let's go look at it. So we are just going to be um, with the vendor name, okay? And um, so same stuff here, and then we are going to join like we always did, but. Uh, but we're also doing it from the primary key table um, here, interjoining into the part master and interjoining into the vendor. Same thing, except we're using the multi key. Okay, so let's go run this whole set. Ninety-three milliseconds down to eighty-three. Okay, let's go look at the messages. Okay, 100, again, logical scans and reads all sort of match up here, here, and here. And the execution plan is 52% versus 48%. So depending on how you mix up and um, you set up your indexes can definitely um, change how SQL Server produces that execution plan. So that's where um, you need to do um, know your data. You need to um, investigate how um, the, the tables could potentially grow and 
and see what um, indexes work. And the other thing too is um, what as your uh, as your database is mature, you're going to want to relook at these strategies to make sure that you are meeting the needs and that the performances are are still continuing to do well. Doug, any questions? Uh, no, no questions. Okay. Quiet bunch. Okay. So globally unique identifier pattern. Good. <laughs> it's so much easier to say good, right? Um, it is considered the least beneficial of all the patterns. Okay. So let's talk about why. So, um, it, the GUID does involve where you, you have um, a function where it, it, it generates the, the GUID, okay, and it's dealing on the Mac, and it's dealing with who, where the um, database is being updated, what computer it's on, and it's looking at physical um, of that, like the Mac address and some other things. The value, excuse me, is not integer-based. Um, zero, it can begin with zero to nine, a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or um, the ABCs. Um, it's usually chose, uh, this GUID is usually chosen because um, you have locations that might go offline. And when you come back online, you wanna make sure that that um, key index is unique. Um, it's a problem with this pattern. It, it doesn't meet a whole lot of the um, attributes of a well-defined uh, primary key. It's wide. Um, it is not ever increasing. It is unique. Okay, and there's two ways to generate a GUID. There's the new ID function, and then there's the new sequential ID. Let's talk about that. Um, and the global, let's see, where I said it, it's, and it adheres to two. So it's static, they are always static, and it's unique. Um, but it's not narrow, and it's not ever increasing. Um, the new ID is never increasing. The new sequential ID um, is, does meet that need of ever increasing until um, your server is restarted, and then the new sequence could be, may or may not be, um, greater than the uh, ever-increasing number. It could actually insert that whole group of new rows into the middle of your database table. So there's a new ID function. Um, like I said, it generates, a, this is a lot of review, where 16-byte hexadecimal, the MAC address, um, each value generated is unique, and um, like I said, it's 0 to 9 or, or A to F. Um, the value created can either can either be, you know, it's not ever increasing. It can go into the middle of the database, which then can create fragmentation. So um, you're never sure what, where that new key is going to go. So, um, and then, but the... And then the new sequential ID does try to address that um, same kind of thing, generates a 16-byte hexadecimal from the MAC address, perfect. Um, each generation value is unique. Um, again, it starts with the 09 or AF. This function um, is ever increasing the next value um, since the computer's last started. So if you have a server that goes down, the next new sequential ID may or may not be uh, the next value. It could be inserted in, into the middle of the database. And there, so it's no guarantee if the next value is ever increasing. So let's go look at that. So here's my examples, um, <clears throat> and we will run that. Okay. okay, and so we have a number of tables that we are creating here. Um, one is the GUID ID with um, identity, and uh, 
and this one is not, um, it's probably a bad name, probably should rename this, but the table we're creating is actually an identity um, table. We're using the identity function to create the primary key. And there you can see there's primary key. Here we're using a unique identifier and we're using, um, so there's the primary key. It's a unique identifier and we can see the constraint on the primary key clustered. And then the new, what's happening then is we set the default to new sequential ID. So anytime it creates a new row, it's going to use this function. Um, this one, um, this table is going to create uh, an, a primary key unique identifier. Um, and the primary key is a clustered index. And it is on that um, new identity primary key. ID primary key and the default is now the new ID. This is an I, I didn't realize um, I have always used um, when I create a, uh, an identify a unique identifier column I always use the unique identifier but apparently there are people out there that um, use varchar 37 and, and I'll demonstrate below why that's not a good idea. Um, here we have the constraint on this column. It's the primary key clustered. And then um, the default um, is the new ID. Okay, so much like the table we did above, the only difference is, is the column is a bar char 36. So let's go fill in these tables. Let me create the tables. And we're going to fill them in. And um, so, and I'm going to show you, let's go look at the content. Um, five, there's our identity, our identity where it's ever increasing. Really super nice to see. Okay. All right. Now, the go this is a new sequential table. And, um, and you will notice, let me get in here, that in this column right here, you can see where it's increasing. Okay. Everything else is the same. So that's pretty cool. And then with um, that's the new using the new sequential ID function. This one is using the new ID function, and you can see it is just really all over the map when it comes to that key. And you will notice that um, the next one, you know, um, where the where you have a GUID, but it's the varchar, and it's definitely creating a unique ID. I don't like these because they're hard to read, um, but there are definitely reasons to use them. For example, like I stated, where um, the, the database is um, offline and then it comes back on and they, there's syncing that needs to happen. Um, let's go. I did it again. Um, so there. Um, bar, come on, bar. There we go. But let's go look at the page counts, okay? And I'm going to execute that. And oh, just so you can see. Um, we're going to be looking at the identity, the new sequence, the GUID uh, with the new sequence where, where it's using the unique identifier, and then this one is using the bar char. So let's go look at the page counts. And you can see the identity is using a lot less rows for a page in the page um, for a page count. Um, so rows and use the page count. So to create that table, um, it's taking 20 six pages. The GUID new sequence is taking 31 and the GUID new ID, the unique identifiers are taking 31. However, the, the one with the bar chart, look at that. It is taking 39. The bar chart is taking much, a lot more um, space than any of the others. So if you have to use a GUID 
um, please use the new sequence or the new ID and definitely not the bar chart um, data type. And there you go there. And any questions there, Doug? No, no questions. Okay. All right. So we are now going, we are done with the clustered index. Um, the clustered index is the table itself in a sorted order so that SQL Server can um, leverage uh, the, the, the data and the sort orders where it can helicopter in and use the B tree to um, get to data. Now non-clustered indexes, we're heading into there. So a non-clustered index provides another method to accessing the data. However, a non-clustered index typically does not contain all of the columns that the clustered index has. So they're smaller. Um, and it's a non-clustered index is the primary goal is to reduce scans. We, what we want to do is see a seek and, um, and that we um, don't need to go to the clustered index to do a key lookup um, for additional data. Um, so we're moving operations to the non-clustered index. Um, so it's more direct uh, route to the data. Um, there are a number of key column characteristics to be aware of with the non-clustered index. Okay, the key column characteristics, each column can appear in the index only a single time. The default is ascending order, can specify descending order, can include up to 16 columns, and but it can't exceed 900 bytes. So that's a pretty wide um, uh, index column. Probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, patterns to look for in a non-clustered index. Um, there's the search column, and that's one that we do a lot of, where the where clause is how our customer seeks in the data. We want to create a non-clustered index based off of how our customer interrogates our, their, their database. There's inter, index intersection. And um, it's, again, it's to minimize uh, reads. Uh, and that's where it comes into account with the where clause. So we'll look at that. There's the multi-column, where there's up to 16 columns in a non-clustered index key. Um, use them. Um, but there might be a reason why you might not want to use them and that um, there are other ways to uh, get to that data. Um, and we're going to look at that. Well, those it's called a covering index where um, where we're including in the index key um, values that are in the select statement. So it's uh, so SQL Server will just use the non clustered index instead of doing that key lookup into the clustered index covering index. A close cousin to the covering index is the include columns. Um, the include is a clause in the index um, construction uh, where you create an index or um, you alter an index and it includes values in the select statement of the query. So let's go look at those. Oops, I forgot. There's filtered indexes, um, not widely used. Um, I can honestly say I've never used a filtered index, um, but you know I might rethink that, um, especially when it comes to archive data and that kind of information. So um, advantages are the index is smaller because it's filtered, um, and fewer opportunities for fragmentation and um, less effort to maintain. And of course, because of being a smaller index, um, even an index scan in a filtered index could become less of an issue. May or may not. Again, you need to do your um, homework as far as creating queries to really tax your database tables and indexes. Um, there's also the foreign key. Um, this, the foreign key on the constraints can cause issues, performance issues, like when we go to delete um, records, and we're going to go over those. Um, and this pattern has a way to look, you know, flush those out and provide improvement. So let's go look at the search column. The search column is the most basic, like I had said, and we commonly use it based off of how our customers are using 
um, querying their database. Um, it's DBA common sense. Um, it's uh, so what we're going to do, like with all these indexes, we're going to just minimize the um, the page reads for the query and improve performance. So let's go to the non-clustered search pattern, search columns pattern. Okay. Okay. Here we're going to create a people table. Okay. And um, and here it has a primary key. It's an identity. Um, the first name and last name are n varchar. That's Unicode. It's a double byte um, character uh, data type. Um, I use n varchar a lot, especially when it comes to SSRS because of implicit um, conversions, um, which can slow this query. And we're going to talk we're going to talk about those implicit um, um, conversions um, in uh, in the query strategies. So uh, a Boolean, which is, is active, there's another email address, and then there's a date, and then we have some notes. There is a primary key on the primary key column. Um, so we do that, and then we're going to fill in that data. And it's actually coming from the Adventures Work Persons, and it's doing some data manipulation to get um, information into the is active and that kind of thing. OK. So let's go do all of this. I don't think. Oh, and you'll notice that it created about 20,000 rows. So, so, um, we, so we're not going to look at it. So we're going to just set the statistics on without a non-clustered index. Okay, and we're going to turn this on, the live execution plan, and we'll see that it had to do, <laughs> look at the pages that it had to read to get to Laura. And it is using um, a scanning on uh, on the clustered index. Okay, so it's having to do a lot of work to get to um, Laura because there's no index on the first name column. So let's go remedy that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a non-clustered index on the column first name. And we'll go look for the first name here of Richard. Okay. Done. And here. Message. Oh, look at this. We only had to read two pages. Yay. And execution plan, it's doing an index seek. So it can drill right into the non clustered index for the first name and pull the information out. Okay, and what we're looking at um, in the select statement is the people PK and the first name. And of course, the where has the first name in it. So, uh, oh, and here we're getting into um, some strategies here um, because uh, we'll talk about this later. Um, but basically what it's doing is this one is just using um, a char and where this one is now using the um, Unicode. So we'll get into that into the uh, query strategies. So and that's it. So. So, hey, we've got a non clustered index working on that. So let's go to the next um, non clustered uh, patterns. And here we're going to do the index intersection pattern. Okay, and then we'll go. Um, we're going to be working with the people table, um, so I'm not going to recreate it. Um, I did 
Um, if you want to read, if you have to run this code, you can just copy it and it'll run. Um, but don't need to do that. Um, here we're going to look at our query, but we're adding last name. And we're also um, in our where clause, we're doing first name and last name. So if we were to go run this, the duration is, and I forgot to run the live execution. Let me do that again. Um, it's, it's doing a logical read of 86. All right. So what it's doing is it's doing an index seek in the upper, in this upper right hand corner. It's doing an index seek on, um, on the uh, first name. And then it's doing a key lookup to get on the clustered index. Let me go down here. On a, to get the information for the last name. Okay, and we can see that in the output list here. Um, so let's go see if we can do something about this because I don't want to do a key lookup. So um, here I'm going to going to create um, an, a non-clustered index on the last name. All right, so let's go do that. Now, same query, and let's go see what happens. Duration, messages, okay, and let's go look at this. Now, the index seek is on the non-clustered, but it's on the last name, if you see here. Uh, so it's doing an index seek on the last name non-clustered index, and then it's doing a key lookup in the cluster to get the first name. All right, well, that's not exactly what I was hoping for. Let's go. Um, Oh, and then I thought, well, if we did that, but that doesn't do anything if we use the Unicode instead. So, so that really didn't work for me. So let me see. But it did switch. Let's see what else might have we can do. Let's go to the next one. Oh, and I index. So we have multiple where it is using it, but it isn't using it. It's a little frustrating. So what should we do on um, the search column to create an index that will minimize the page reads? But I didn't see much of a performance. Maybe. Um, what's happening is SQL Server is deciding what indexes to use. Huh. And there. Um, I had already done that. So I got ahead of myself because I'm getting more excited as we go. So the multi-column pattern increases performance again by trying to reduce the reads. Sounds familiar. Um, and so with SQL Server, uh, clustered index can have up to 16 columns. So a single index can have more than one column in it. Um, and just remember, uh, non-clustered indexes don't, are not required to be narrow, and um, we can contain as many columns as necessary. Um, for many good queries, um, the same columns. So for many, use this. So when you go to create one of these indexes, you're going to want to look at how um, the uh, customer is doing its their queries and what columns to create the indexes on. So let's go there. Multi. And we're working with the people table, so I don't want to recreate that. And here we are going to do the same queries we did before with first name, last name. Okay, and we know that didn't work out so good. So let's create an index, a non clustered index right here. Uh, where it's based off of first name and last name. All right, so let's go do that. 
Okay, I'm going to turn on live um, events here. So here's our query, and I'm going to set statistics on okay, F5. I'm going to run it, and let's, ah, look at that. The duration is down to nothing. Yay. All right, so we have one scan, one logical read. Excellent. And what it's doing, if you can see, it's now able to do an index seek on the ver on the uh, on the non-clustered index. The one it's using is the first name last name one that we just created, so it didn't even have to go to the clustered index. That is way cool. So um, so we can drop the last index one if we wanted to, and it would still work out to be the same. So I'm going to do that. And, um, and let's do this. So I dropped the last name index. Would this still work? So our, our index was on, we come up here. The index that we created was on first name and then the last name. Okay. So if we come down here. I just lost my place. Okay, so for the last name, come here. Oh. And we're going to execute that. So here we had to do a lot, and let's see what the execute. Oh, look at this. It's saying it had to do an index scan. You can tell from the fat row, it had to go through every single record based off of this query. The query was where the last name. Now our index began with the first name. So SQL Server isn't using that index. So we now have to create one that has the last name and first name. Oh, all right. So, and it says that we can do that. So we did. and. Now we can come here and we can go same query, last name, and then run it. And we're back down to a duration of zero, a lot less to read, and we're now back up to an index seek, but it is on the last name, first name combination on the multi-columns. Oh my gosh, I can start seeing where we have a lot more indexes that we might need to create based off of my customers' searches. Let's go look and see if there's a better solution. There is the covering index, um, and I'm going to skip over this for time. So, but the covering index basically, um, oops, I went to the wrong one. Basically, um, is going to have go back here, it's going to have columns in the index, um, added to the index sequences that where those columns aren't really used for uh, searching um, and using an index seek, but um, is used where um, the columns are in the select part of the query. And so it becomes searchable search Abled. So let's go look at that real quick. Oh, I said I was going to skip over that. Um, I'm just going to show you here. It's all here. And we talk about Sargeable, which is search argumentable. So it, it, it has all of the columns in the index. And I'm going to just show you real quick where um, I have a, se a sequence a select statement where I have is act is inactive. So what I basically do is create a non-clustered index that has all the columns so that the is active is added to the select statement, but we can use the index for that. I'm not going to cover that because there's a close cousin to this and it is called um, include columns pattern and I, I like this this is a solution that SQL Server came up with um, to um, make a little more sense I guess um, of 
than to have all of the columns in the sequence. So the include column pattern is closely related. Um, there is an include clause um, that you can include columns that aren't sorted, but um, can be used like a covering for a covering index. Um, the clause allows non-key columns to be added, okay, so that we can have a covering index. Um, the difference between the include and covering is um, patterns in the where. So let's go look at that. Um, several characteristics of the include pattern is um, non-key columns to be included in the index. They're not sorted. Um, can't specify ascending or descending, which makes sense if they're not sorted. And the maximum number of columns in an index is 1,023. Okay, so we can add a lot of information into the um, non-index, uh, the non-clustered index columns, which includes and it, uh, which has the include clause in it. Um, the size restrictions for the key column does not affect the include columns. Okay, so let's go look at the um, include. All right, and include. So I'm going to go over this briefly. Um, I'm looking at my time, and we're getting close to um, time. So I'm going to speed things up there a little bit. So here um, we have where we're adding the email um, to this select statement, and we'll see where it um, has to do with scan. Um, here we are going to um, drop this. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to. I drop it because it's. Um, yeah. Drop it and then create it just in case I don't get an error. So anyway, so I'm going to create um, this non-cluster index where it's going to be first name, last name. But here I have the include clause in it where I'm going to include the email address. So let me go do that. Think, think, think. Okay. And then here, so same query, but let's go look what it does. Zero, oh, I forgot the live execution plan. Let me do that again. Execution plan at some time, but we have very little reads, okay? And we see where the non clustered, where we're using the first name, last name, include, and I know that from here in the properties, and you can see it in the object. Um, just show that real quick. Right here, you can see it in the object. So, what um, object, the index, the non-clustered index it is using. That's cool. So, uh, so, and then I said, what if we were to drop all these other indexes? Would it still work? Okay. Um, so, I'm going to drop all this, and I'm going to add one back in. So, and it's going to, um, in, so we're going to do it just on the first name, and then include last name, first name. Um, last name is active and email um, address. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to come here. So our select statement now has a number of fields in it. And the where is based off of the um, first name. So let's go here. Duration. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. Um, to be that quite that high, but you can see where it's doing an index seek on the first name include. So index seeks are good. And what if we were to do a where with the last name in there? Huh, let's try that. And duration. Not very many reads, and it still can use that um, first name include non clustered um, index to get all the information it needed because of the columns that are in the include, and that ends that. 
So there's the filtered one. Um, I have not used it, um, and I will not uh, go over this. Um, it's in the uh, in the um, in the uh, white paper as well as in the code examples. Um, it's just a way to um, filter out records that aren't normally used, like for archiving. Uh, foreign key pattern, foreign key, um, where foreign keys are used to constrain um, from a child table to a, uh, a parent table. Um, and what we don't realize is um, that there is a price to pay, especially when there's maintenance and we want to delete a record and um, and uh, see what happens to performance when um, we, we don't have a foreign key uh, non-clustered index involved. So let's go and look at it. So there's two types. Um, there's the parent. And when we delete from the parent, uh, this one usually doesn't um, cause the problem. It's the one on the child. Um, where uh, there's a modification in the parent and uh, we go and delete. So let's go look at this. So the validation on the child is where the foreign key pattern is applied. Okay, so let's go look at that. Okay, and non-clustered foreign keys. So um, we're using uh, two tables. There's a um, customer example and a header example. So let's go here. And we're going to go create, um, it has a customer PK and the header has a, a header PK and an order date and a due date. And then there's the foreign key. Okay, and we're gonna do constraints on the primary key for the header. Um, so we're creating the primary key clustered index. And then there is a constraint on the foreign key. So um, for the foreign key, and then there's a reference into that particular table to that column. So um, here, and then we create the custom mer table and oh, the content and create the content here. It's ugly, but it works. So, um, so execute that. Of course. Let me do my cleanup. Uh, da, da, da. You know what? I'm going to not create a constraint. Of course, this isn't working. Bear with me here a second. Um, I'm going to do cleanup and I'm going to drop. See if I can drop this one. Okay, and let's see if I can drop this one. And if this continues to give me problems, um, I'm going to skip this and we can come back to it. Okay. Of course. Let's see if I can do this again. Okay, I dropped it. Yay. Oh, please work. No, okay. I'm gonna skip over this just for time reasons. Um, if you go through the code, um, you will notice that, um, that it is definitely an advantage, um, when, especially when you go to do maintenance, like uh, deleting um, the, uh, the header, is it the header? Yes, that um, that the foreign key, um, if you have that foreign key pattern indexed into the customer uh, table, then it will speed things up. Um, unfortunately, my code for some reason decided that it was not going to work today. So let's get into query strategies. Um, we have 15 minutes to blow through this. So um, let's continue on. So query strategies are an act of looking at code and practices. Um, it, uh, it's code review, basically, if you like, and, and how to 
and how they can create bottlenecks which reduce performances and how we can take advantage of indexes and look at the, how we're querying them and those indexes and make it um, perform much better. So um, we'll cover like comparisons. We'll get to them as much as possible. There's the concatenation, there's the computed columns and the data conversion. What I would like to do is hit like and data conversions, and then we can always come back to um, the others if we have time. Okay, so. So let's go to the like. The like allows searching um, for a single character or pattern. It's when we use a like, the, it's, it begins with. Um, a like with an A, a B, a C can take advantage of indexes. Not a problem. The problem arises with contains or ends um, where we're looking in the where clause where we want to find a, a pattern in the data where it's contained within like um, an address or something. And that's what we're going to look at. The index um, doesn't have a way to look into the middle of that uh, column content. So and without um, without the ability to do indexing, um, creating statistics on the middle part, um, their uh, SQL Server doesn't can't um, select the correct non-clustered index for that. However, there is a way to remedy that. So let's go look at it. So we're going to go to the like. All right, and here we're going to um, we have an add address. And we're creating um, an int with address line one two state, and we're just going to go there. So we're going to create it, and then we're going to fill in that content from the person's address. Okay, and then from there, we're going to create a non-clustered index. And it's going to be um, based off the address one two city state all of that. So and we're going to clear the cache and then what we're going to do is we're going to with the begins with and we'll see and we'll turn the life execution plan on and we'll see that um, it does a beautifully for that and then we can do it does a, a index seek. Perfect. That's exactly what we're expecting. However, what if we do a like contains? Um, let's see what happens. And the reason we, the like contains is because I have the um, percentage signs. So um, we're, look, we're looking for something that contains uh, within that column. So let's go there. And oh boy, um, we're looking at a lot more um, page reads. And it's having to do an index scan. It can't handle that contains. So what do we do? Um, the solution is a full text index. And there's a bunch of information on that. Um, you can check to see if you already have a full text index. Um, and if I run this, and we'll see if it is enabled to. So, um, so we go there, and we do in Ad AdventureWorks. It has, um, yep, it's installed, and then uh, and then it is enabled. So it's installed and enabled. And then if you need to enable it, you can um, run this um, stored procedure. And then if you want to understand what's um, in the system. There is uh, DMV um, where you can then see the name of it is uh, AdventureWorks. It's actually 2016, so that's pretty funny um, since we're working with 2019. So, so what I need to do is I um, need to create a full text index on um, the address line one. And the key index, well, that's its name. So we're going to go do that. Okay, and then look, watch this now. So let me look at this. So we've got all this information here, and it's contains. So there you go. So let's go see what it does. 
does a logical reads, okay, and um, and you can see where it's doing the full text. So it is a little faster. Um, and this is a way if you have now I don't have customers that do the contains a lot, um, but this is a one way that you can um, leverage SQL Server to to be able to do searches, full text searches, and using that technology in SQL Server. Um, the next one that I want to talk about, there's concatenation where you're adding columns together. Um, you're better off instead of saying first name plus last name equals first name plus last name, do first name equals last name equals and you'll get the same kind of thing. So we're going to skip over that. Uh, computed columns. Uh, SQL Server allows you to compute um, columns. So like to figure out a unit price um, or do a first name plus last name kind of um, computed columns. SQL Server um, uh, does with the, it can't use the columns that make up that computed uh, columns. So for example, in the Adventures Works uh, 2019 in the purchase order detail, it has a line total. SQL Server cannot have leverage an index on order quantity or unit price. You actually have to create an index on the computed column line total. And that's what this um, discussion is all about. Um, so and that's what I'm saying. It can't leverage the individual um, non-clustered indexes on those particular columns. You have to actually create an index on that computed uh, column and that's what this one's about and I'm going to skip it. So um, scalar functions. Oh, let's let's talk about scalar functions. I don't want to skip this either. So scalar functions um, in SQL Server, you can, there's user defined or you can use the ones in SQL Server such as month, year and end of month. Um, of course, they're user defined. Um, their values are calculated and 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 the, those scalar functions aren't known until runtime. So there's no statistics available, so it can't um, leverage that. So let's go in here to scalar functions. Um, and we're going to try, we're going to create a people too. And if you look, um, the primary key, first name, last name, is active email certification, <laughs> last order date, and notes. And we're creating a primary key on the primary key people, too. So, and then um, we're creating a uh, last name uh, non clustered index with and includes with the first name and last order. And we're also um, creating a uh, another non-clustered uh, index with the last order with include on first name and last name. So, and then we're going to fill in from the uh, persons table out of adventures work. So let's just run all that code. Okay, again, 20,000 records, which we're, which we're pretty familiar with now. And I'm going to turn on um, the live here and then we're going to so so here we have a, a, where I'm just going to check the right so I'm going to do the last name equals Meyer but we're also going to do a right trim where it's Meyer let's go look at this so see what it does so um, same results message and the reads so for the first one that where we're just saying last name equals Meyer, we have two reads um, of pages. So, but if we do the R trim, we have a logical read of 119 pages. So you can see where our the one where we have the equals is using an index C on the last name. Perfect. Where we're when here the bottom one when we're using the R trim. It's having to do an index scan. And so, and you can also see from the percentages from 3% to 97%. So, what do we do? <laughs> Let's look at another one. Um, and this one is with year and month. So, here, what I'm suggesting in, instead of using um, 
year and month, I'm suggesting we do greater than and equals to and then a less than. And so look at the values. So here, the last order is greater than or equal to um, 2001-0101, and it's at midnight. And then the last order is less than 22, 2022-0101. So anything less than January 1st in the year 2022, which would, would include anything in 1231-2021. So, and this one will function the same where we want the year and the month is between. Um, and let's go see what happens here. So we, here, the first one, where we're using that greater than, less than, equals, um, and we're not using any scalar function, we have 22 reads, where the logical uh, reads for the ones where we're using the scalar function, a lot more reads. And so we can also see where it's 16%, we're using the index seek, at where with the greater than, less than, and then with the second query, where we're using the scalar functions, you can see the percentage is 84% and it's having to do a scan. And here, end of month, same kind of thing. So let's go, I wanna to go to data conversions. So let's go there. Data conversions, creating queries with joins, operations and where. There's a potential to have data types that do not match and um, the SQL server needs to convert the values of the columns to so that they're the same data type. And we'll uh, do an implicit conversion. SQL server will do an implicit one um, behind the scenes. You won't even know that it's doing that unless you go looking for it. OK, so um, so let's be aware of it by doing those implicit conversions. Um, there's a negative impact of performance because it's basically performing a scalar function. So let's go and look at that. And this is the last coding example. We're using the people to hit two, so I don't need to do all of that. Okay, so, and what this is doing is it's, we're trying to find um, where something does not exist. So let's go here. And there's different ways to do it. Um, so uh, there's one row. Whoop. Huh, I was not expecting that. I was expecting. Oh, so we're, oh, okay. Gotcha. Cow. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. What we're doing here is we are looking to see if the state column exists in the people too and if it if it does if it doesn't exist then we're going to add that column okay and if you notice it's a char two okay and then um we're gonna we drop the index um okay and then we're going to create an index where it's on the state um, the newly created uh, column, and then it's going to include the first name and last name. So we're going to do that. This is all set up. And then here, I'm just filling in content. So if it's null, it won't be null anymore. So um, I'm going to do that real quick. Execute. Okay, so now you can see over here our state um, now is at least filled in. And we have something there for everyone. Okay, that's all that does. So, um, and I want you to see where the state is an n bar char. Okay, uh, and that's not the one I wanted. This is this one on the abbreviation. Okay, so I'm going to recreate this because I can't remember what we did, and it's going to be um, and the uh, constraint, the primary key key is going to be on the abbreviation. So let's do this. Yay, and we got 52 rows, so good. And then um, do that, and then let's do some 
looking at data conversions and this is really simple so and then we'll be done so let's just do this so here we're doing let's go back and look at this query i'm sorry i'm jumping ahead so um we're looking at the people where the state is equal to pa okay so um, so we know that the state and the people, it, PA, is a char 2, okay? So, uh, and then if we do it where it's Unicode, it gives us um, some wonky results uh, where it's actually having to do a conversion. And you'll see that it's doing a bunch of logical reads. So what's happening is because the, the type, let me go to the properties here on the uh, seek predicate, you'll see that um, that the seek predicate, the state is doing right there. It's just looking at a parameterized statement and that would be the PA, okay? So let's go, let's go to um, the other one, this one where it's having to do an index seek and go to the properties here. And look what it's doing. Yeah. Here, it's doing a convert. It's converting the column state, every single value in that um, index um, to match the NPA. Well, so we have to be really careful on how we set up our queries. The other thing to consider then is what if a table, there's a table mismatch. In people, the state is a char two, but in the state table, in the state table, the abbreviation is an n bar char two. Oh my goodness, what would happen? So here we go. So we can see that um, we are doing people state and we're just doing an inner join. We're not, this select statement doesn't even have anything from the state table. But for some reason, we're doing an inner join on state where the state equals the abbreviation and we do the PA. What's going to happen? Okay, got it. Oh my gosh, SQL Server is having to create val um temporary files in the background to produce um, this, uh, the, um, the result set. So, and you can see where it's doing an index seek, it's doing compute scalar, it's having to interrogate the, the clustered index, and then it's doing having to do a hash match. And what's interesting to hear is that it's telling you, oh, and I think right there, right here right here and it's not doing it very well it's telling you there's a warning here and it's talking about that uh convert implicit um on the the columns so uh let's go here so now if we drop the index and then we alter the people table to do an n bar char and then we create the index again and let's see what happens Same query, but now we're making sure that it's using the Unicode and state to state. So if we go here and we run it, huh, no more work tables, a lot less logical reads, and look, it's doing a clustered index seek and doing an index seek. So happy camper SQL server. Happy camper? Um, yes, indeed. So that was a lot of information thrown at you, um, but we're done. Doug, was there any questions before I go? No, no questions. Okay, resources. There are a ton of resources out there. Um, if you want to play, like we, I played here, download the SQL Server Developer Edition. It's free. Um, download the AdventureWorks database. That's free. Um, there is a uh, book that is not free, but so worth the money. 
is the export performance index. Um, X, and it should not say export, it should say expert performance indexing in SQL Server for 2019. And um, that uh, the same author had worked with Grant Fritchie um, to uh, do this, an older version, the second edition of this particular book. Um, it's also um, one or the other, um, can't go wrong with that. Um, I did indexing for the rest of us in SQL Server 2016, cover a lot of basics about what a clustered index is, what a clustered index is, what a non-clustered index is. And then when it go, comes to the SQL Server Execution Plans 101, um, I, there's a video out there um, for Virtual Fox Fest if you want to learn more about execution plans. Um, there are SQL Server users groups and conferences and Google it. I mean, um, SQL Server uh, developers, DBAs, they love to share their information and um, they remind me a lot of our Fox community too. So great people, great resources. So in summary, oh my gosh, two hours and we still didn't cover it all. Um, and I apologize for that. Um, index strategies, um, it's a way to identify potential indexes for your tables in your databases. There are heaps, clustered and non-clustered indexes when we know for sure that heaps are really um, just the table. Uh, clustered index is an ordered uh, table. It is, um, and then of course, non-clustered indexes are indexes. And we determine different patterns to look for and use. Query strategies, there are coding practices for well-formed query statements. Each of these two topics could be a presentation in and of themselves with lots of more uh, information and deep, more deep dive. Um, with query strategies, there's a lot of gotchas out there. So you have to really do your homework when you build your query statements. The end goal is to perform uh, to provide performance improvements on your database um, through the use of indexes. Happy campers, right? And happy customers. So let's rock on. And here, and please fill out your uh, evaluations. It helps me become better for you. And I thank you.